Cool. Um, welcome, everybody. Uh, I'm uh, to have Matt Artisan on the uh, webinar this week. Uh, we're going to be talking uh, a lot about, uh, well, let's really go back a little bit, you know, because I've known Matt for, what is it, 10 years now, Matt? Yeah, I think so. At least 10 years, right? Yeah, I think I'm, yeah. I'm actually I'm living in the same that. building that I met you at. Into it. So I think I was living here in 2009, right around there. And so uh, Matt came 10 years ago and, and uh, interned at uh, my company back when my company was, was a lot younger and a, more of a baby company. I didn't see him. And uh, no, here he is all over the internet. He's killing it. He's specializing in uh, teaching guys really to be present during the day. Uh, really all about that that daytime energy. He then traveled the world. I think you've been to how many countries? Some countries, meaning women in every country, right? Uh, yeah. How I've many been was to it? 78, 78 countries, and we've taught workshops in 42 countries, I believe. I keep or going back to the same ones. Something. I keep going back to the same ones. You keep going back to different ones. I think it's kind of uh, interesting. Um, so he's been to 78 countries. He's been meeting, so he's met, he's, he's, he's literally gone out meeting women in 78 countries. Uh, so he's got a certain wealth of experience, especially when it comes to day game. Um, I'm going to try to increase the light here a bit, guys. When it comes to day game and meeting uh, women during the day that uh, a lot of uh, guys just don't have. And I was watching a lot of Matt's videos because I was really getting a feel for where you are today as opposed to when I knew you. And there's a lot of presence I saw, a lot of eye contact, a lot of phenomenal subcommunication. There was this sense of, as I was watching you, less is more. You know, this whole sense of don't work so damn hard. You know, work on who you're being. Um, so I saw all these great stuff going on in the way you're being. You also have this gift for keeping the advice simplifying the advice and not making it complicated. Um, so let's let's dive in and talk about that a little bit. And uh, and guys, we'll get to your questions a little later. It's gonna, it might be hard to get to all your questions, but I'm gonna do the best I can. Uh, as more and more of you guys get on the call, sometimes, you know, there's sometimes there's more questions than I can answer, so, or I can have Matt answer, let's put it that way. So, uh, so with that said, then, um, <clears throat> let's talk about your specialty is really approaching women and uh, meeting women and and it just like walking right up on the street and how do you get a guy to do that really well I'm trying to fix the light here and it's not working I might have to move again um, can you talk yeah. a little bit about uh, about that just how you know how you help guys get to this point where they're mm -hmm they can uh, approach women with ease. Like that's the biggest question I think we got is the approach anxiety question. It's like everybody, it's, it's a never ending question and you're, you've really mastered that. Can you talk a little bit about that? Sure, and let me know how the audio is. I don't know if it's picking up this mic or this mic, so just there's, let me know. There's a hiss in the background. There's, there's a hint a of a hiss. Okay. Yeah, okay. it's gotten better. Like right. Does that do anything? Yeah, when I, It's still there, but it's really subtle. Okay. You know, yeah, I'm not um, sure I think which mic is even. We're fine. Used. Oh, I guess I can check. Uh, but anyways, yeah, like you said, Brian, I really have the philosophy of simplifying things because the more that you have to think about, like if you have to think about all these things that are out there in the pickup community, like teasing, cocky, funny, bantering, blah, 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 right? There's technique after technique after technique. If you go out there with all of these things in your head, it makes things really difficult and unnatural because you're trying to remember all these lines or all these techniques and all these principles instead of just let internalizing, you know, maybe a few concepts into you know them becoming part of who you are that it's just who you are you're you're not you're not a needy guy who's acting cool and you know saying all the right things which she will eventually figure out anyway when she's not drunk you're actually not a needy guy anymore you're actually a confident guy so that's what we help guys do and try to simplify that process but at the same time you know 
giving guys a framework so they have an idea where to take the conversation without actually saying, say this line, say this line, this line. It's more of just kind of a framework so they know how to guide the interaction. Like, for example, in a short interaction, like in the daytime, it's going to be a beginning, a middle, and an end. So we, you know, help guys through that process, the beginning, a middle, and end, to make it as effective as possible. And we can talk about that, um, you know, what those elements are. But I think the, before we even get there, the main thing is approach anxiety. How do you get over approach anxiety? Because you can't really I think, do I think much. These, uh, I think these are great topics. I mean, we look at uh, what, you know, what is approach anxiety? How do you get over it? And then the beginning, middle, end. Because that's the second question we get a lot of is I, I can talk to girls, but every time I, t I don't know what to say. You know, that's the big, the, the two biggest questions guys have. How do I approach and how do I talk to girls? Some guys don't really care about approaching. They they meet women, social circle, online mm -hmm. dating, but they still don't know how to talk. So, so, um, so let's dive into that a little bit. Go for it. Uh, go ahead and talk a little bit more about the approaching anxiety. The approaching anxiety. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. that's the first thing. I mean, if you can't, I mean, honestly, you can meet women without approaching. I I, mm -hmm. I know lots of guys that do it, but the truth is, is there's no better way to work on your self esteem and confidence. I think than to work on your approach anxiety. Whether you ever fully get over it or not, the, the more comfortable you get, the more you're going to build your self-esteem and confidence. I don't know if you agree with that. Uh, but, absolutely. Uh, I think, yeah. So please, Be uh, please talk about that a bit. Yeah, because once you know that you can walk up to any woman, and yeah, you're not going to get every woman you talk to, but knowing that you have that ability to walk up to any girl you're attracted to and you know potentially have a great interaction, that definitely builds a lot of confidence. So how do you get there? Well, there's a few things that you can do. I mean, in any challenge or sticking point or even goal that you have in life, there's an inner game aspect and an outer game aspect, right? The inner game being the thoughts and feelings, outer game being the actual actions that you take to get the results. So as far as inner game, right, the feeling that you're going to experience is usually, right, there's going to be a, a feeling. It's anxiety. It's, you know, maybe a turning sensation in your body when you see that beautiful woman that you want to go approach. And it's that feeling a lot of times that stops the guys from going to talk to her. And it's just instant. You know, that feeling comes out of left field, even though logically they want to talk to her, but they can't. So one thing to do is to just instead of trying to fight that feeling, which is kind of, you know, what everybody does initially, you know, it's an unpleasant feeling. Try to get rid of it and think about other things and just, you know, be, kind of beat yourself up that you always feel this way. But instead, just understand that it's normal. It is natural to have approach anxiety, anxiety I think. Um, and to just allow yourself to just sit in it and experience it, you know, just <laughs> sit there for a second and just say, okay, I feel that anxiety. And even describe it to yourself. Okay, it's in my stomach. It's like this churning sensation, this butterfly feeling. And just almost like breathe into it and just like put all your awareness into that anxiety, right? This is where meditation and feeling your body can really help. And I know you talk about those things, um, but just allowing yourself to feel that anxiety. And then you realize it becomes, it's kind of like no big deal. It's just like another sensation that you know is going to be gone soon. Whether you approach the woman or not, that feeling is going to go away very quickly. So, um, so let's, let me ask you a question. This is, uh, I've heard people say different things, and it's about approach anxiety. Do you find that the approach anxiety eventually goes away, or do you find that you just develop such a good relationship to it that it never, that you're just, you actually find it enjoyable? Like, you see the two different dynamics there? Yeah, oh, yeah. I think, I don't know if it ever goes away completely for every situation. Like for me personally, I, I really feel like anxiety when I approach a woman, on, you know, walking down the street or in almost any daytime situation because I've done it so many times. Say that, again, if, you, uh, say that part again about you feel what because it broke up a little bit. Okay. I, I really don't feel anything in like a daytime situation where the girl's walking down the street or any situation that I've done so many times, but let's say she's with a guy, which I've done plenty of times, but it's not as common 
you know, I haven't put myself in that situation hundreds of times, that would probably give me a little, it does sometimes give me a little anxiety or, you know, approaching a big group at a club or something like that, that I, you know, I, I haven't, I don't do as much anymore. I might have some, you know, a little in, adrenaline rush. So the point is, I mean, I think you can get to the point if you do it so often and it's just, you know, every time you're walking down the street, you see a beautiful woman. It's just, it becomes who you are. You're just a guy that talks to girls that that feeling can pretty much go away, but it, it may not go away in every situation. And that's why it's so important to just remember that when you feel that feeling to, to embrace it, like it's an unpleasant feeling, but you can learn to almost enjoy that feeling. Just like, you know, some people like, uh, I was just talking to somebody who did the Wim Hof method where he's like, you know, in an ice bath, that's super unpleasant. But if you put yourself in that ice bath over and over again, eventually it becomes not that bad and potentially even enjoyable, just like approaching women can become enjoyable. So you got to like sit in that feeling and allow yourself to just like enjoy it. So that's part of it. Do you find uh, that you get, uh, I, I, I've had this discussion with uh, Yad, if you know Yad over at daygame, go to daygame.com. And um, do you find that you get so comfortable that it actually almost works against you? Because you're too, you're too, that having that little bit of fear makes you a little more real, you know, versus like, I'm totally comfortable with this and, and a girl can feel the difference. Like you do this all the time, player vibe, you know what I mean? I don't think that could really hurt you, or at least it hasn't really hurt yeah, hurt yeah. me. But there have been times where, like, I would this was a long time ago where I would say, uh, "Hey, I don't really, I don't do this often, but I just saw you here." And the girl, I remember one time she said, "I can tell you do this a lot," and I was like, "Ooh, called out on my bullshit. Better make sure I'm always being real," you know. So I've never had it actually be a problem. Um, yeah, Zan, 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 Zan Perion used to say, uh, honesty is an aphrodisiac, and I think it's true. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, because women aren't really used to honest guys. They're always hiding, pretending to be something they're not. And, you know, a woman, a woman's intention, really, when she meets you is to find out who is this guy. What is his identity? What are his values? Like, you know, who so is So how honest are you when you approach? I mean, how... How much do you just speak the truth of what, who you are, what you want, where you're at? How, how brutally honest are you with women? Well, on a scale from one to 10? Yeah. Let's, let's I mean, that. I don't go up to them and say, oh my God, you're so hot, I want to fuck you. Yeah. I don't do that. I know there are some guys that do they that. Do that yeah. yeah. But my intention is not, you know, I don't want to put out, put out a creepy vibe. I mean, but here's the thing too, you got to be okay with like, breaking some eggs to make an omelet and knowing that, you know, when you approach women, yeah, sometimes you might push the line. You might say or do something that could be considered creepy. It just, I mean, it happens. It's not what we're trying to do, but there is kind of a thin line between being direct and, and, and stating your intentions and being creepy. But I don't, I don't take it that sexual that fast usually. So I usually, I mean, when I see a girl walking down the street, I'm usually just, honest in my approach, which is usually, I mean, probably almost 100% of the time is that I'm attracted to her. So I just tell her that I might tell her she's pretty, or cute or beautiful, stunning, whatever I feel in that moment. And what even a lot of times I don't actually give a compliment. Um, because it's not in the words. It, I, I realize it has nothing to do with the words, it just has to do with the intention which is in your vibe, it's in your eye contact, your facial expression. So I usually just go up and just say, hi, I just saw you here and I wanted to meet okay. you. Let's, let me take it a layer deeper then. Um, you come up and say, hi, I wanted to meet you, but is there, do you allow your turn on? Like if you've got sexual turn on in your body for this girl and you think she's super fucking sexy, do you allow your body to feel that turn on while you say hi? Or do you try to shut it you, down? You, you have to. Yeah. You have to. I mean, that's yeah. what makes it work, you know, quote unquote work. Um, because, it, yeah, it's not the words that turn her on. It's the feeling. It's that you feel a comfortable in her presence. And that and, you know, part of that is, again, getting over the approach anxiety, the repetition, approaching, approaching. And there's other ways, you know, things that you talk about, like getting grounded and present, breathing, 
all those kind of things to get comfortable. And then when you're comfortable, then you can allow what you're feeling to be expressed. And that's why you don't have to say like, I want to fuck you right away. She can see it in your eyes. And that's, that's overt communication or covert communication, right? It's flirting. It's not, she doesn't know you're, uh, you're not com coming out and just directly saying it, right? It becomes more yeah. playful. She can tell that you want her, that you desire her. And that, yeah, I think you know, the honesty can turn her on. The, what you're saying there is the honesty is in the way you're being. Um, and where the dishonesty comes in is when you're saying stuff that you don't feel. You know, when you're actually saying mm -hmm. one thing, but you feel another, you know, you don't have to say everything you feel because that would be ridiculous. Well, you know, because mm -hmm. you know, that's just a lot of shit to say. But if you allow yourself to honestly feel it and if, and and not deny it and not pretend like it's not there, then that's the that's where honesty is at. That's where that whole idea of honesty is an aphrodisiac goes. And yeah, um, it's the congruency with your words and then what you're feeling, who you are, really to your core. <clears throat> okay, that's perfect. Um, so let's uh, let's take a tip on. Um, uh, let's get back to this idea of approach anxiety. How do you get rid of it? Can you talk a little bit about what you use or a, a technique to get rid of it? And then we'll go into a question and we'll kind of go back and forth between mm -hmm. the topics that we're going to cover, the conversational topics, and then the questions from the, from the people that are on the call. Before. Sounds so good. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll give you guys a, a few like simple techniques um, and you can I would do all of them. So like number one, experience it fully, right? We, we just talked about that. Um, number two, as far as inner game is visualizing yourself making approaches, like just taking a minute or two to just see, like close your eyes and see yourself approaching women. If you do that every day, just for a minute or two, you know, you're training your subconscious. Sorry about that. That's okay. That's, that's my, my bad. <laughs> I thought that was yeah. feedback. Uh, yeah. You're training your subconscious to see yourself approach. Like your subconscious doesn't know the difference between reality and fantasy and you know athletes do this all the time they call it their mental reps when they're visualizing the ball going in the hoop whatever so i recommend doing that because it's easy it only takes you know just do it a minute or two a couple times a day and same thing with affirmations or mantras whatever you want to call it but if you tell yourself every single day that you are a man that approaches women that women love you or, or things like, you know, women love when I approach them. If you said that every single day, a few times a day throughout your day, eventually when you see that beautiful woman, you've said that and you've seen it so many times, you're just going to do it. Like eventually, I don't know. I mean, for some people it might take a while. Um, you know, other people might do it much quicker, but that will help. That's the inner game aspect. But if you just do all that and you never actually go out and practice, then you're just, you know, sitting there. It's like, it's like the secret. You're sitting in a chair just wishing for a Corvette to fall in front of you. It's, it's not going to happen. You actually have to do uh, action. You actually have to take action. Yeah. So that's the next I, thing always say, I always say affirmations work best for people that are in um, a state where they're, they're, they're motivated. People. They're driven. They're, they're, they're going for it. Depressed people, people that are really apathetic, heavy, heavy energy, um, tend to have a hard time with affirmations. And so mm -hmm. I always recommend I recommend to them they need to start meditation to get underneath the uh, apathy and the pain before because the affirm you know putting the affirmations on top of the apathy can be difficult. Do you run into a lot of clients like that that are, that are uh, really heavy depressed and that the affirmations don't work for or really heavy numbed out? Because they're numbed yeah. out, I can, yeah. you can't turn on a numbed out, right? So yeah, that's when you got to go deeper. I mean, affirmations. I look at it, it's kind of a surface level thing and it's not a quick fix it takes longer and you know i mean for some people it could take years and some people it just doesn't work at all because their brain keeps saying bullshit 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 yeah. so yeah it I depends on how deep those core beliefs are if their core belief is you know approaching talking to strangers is bad or or women hate me or something like that and just say oh women love me isn't gonna you know it's not gonna change everything it could happen yeah Oh, you, you know. oh, I froze? Am I? Yeah, you're good? back now. You're back. You're okay. good. It only lasts about five seconds. So with those guys, I mean, yeah, you got to go deeper and find out what those core beliefs are. And, you know, there definitely can be some, you know, some deeper like NLP work that needs to be done. 
Um, but it's just kind of like the key is just to see yourself approaching, like, like just kind of reaffirm like those negative thoughts and change those negative thoughts from, I am a guy that doesn't approach to, I am a guy that does approach. Right. Cause it is, I, I know a guy who did this for like, uh, on a topic that he really had a hard time believing, Like he believed it could happen, but it was way outside of his reality. It was like a giant quantum leap for him. So he did, uh, he did it specifically, it was specifically in this case with money and business success. He did it for two years straight um, every day, the same thing, even though even within that two years, it didn't look like he was going to get what he was going to get. And at the end of the two years, suddenly out of nowhere, everything reversed and it came, and the very thing he was affirming came into his life out of nowhere. And um, and his business suddenly just did this giant quantum leap. And it was like amazing. Um, when you really That's a really good point, because you never know how long it can take. I mean, you could be like, you know, getting there, going, going, going. And then you think, oh, two years, I'm going to give up. I'm not going to do this anymore. And really, it was like just one inch further is when yeah. you would have broken that barrier. So it's just you got to just keep doing it. it does make a difference. But that's just, you know, the inner game is, is part of it. But then there's also the outer game, which is obviously taking action. You have to actually just go and do something. So I recommend just finding out, like figuring out what are you comfortable with? Are you comfortable with asking for directions, going up to that beautiful girl and asking for directions. Or maybe you're not even comfortable with that. Maybe it's just walking towards her and not even opening your mouth. And you have to do that 50 times until, okay, I see beautiful women, I walk up to them, but I don't talk to them. It sounds silly, but for guys that have like crazy severe approach anxiety, you know, they might have to do that 50 times and then move to the next step, which might be asking 50 women for directions until that becomes no big deal. And they don't take it any further. And then taking one step beyond that, which might be um, just, you know, not even going direct yet. Maybe it's just asking for directions and then making a comment like, oh, I like your shoes. And that's it. And then running away. And, but eventually you'll keep, you know, you'll make progress. Now, most, yeah. you know, some people take 50 times. Some people take, you know, just doing it 10 times. I had a client for five days. And by the end of the five days, you know, we're, just, we're, like he was starting to have conversations. Like it took a long, long time. And most guys are doing direct approaches on the first day. So everybody's different. And, you know, if you have a lot of bad programming for, for 20, 30 years of your life, you know, don't expect the first time you go out, you're going to be getting phone numbers left and right. You may not. And it might take a little bit of time, but just like going to the gym, you know, it takes time. You don't see the muscles and the results right away, but you keep hitting the gym eventually you know, you get the results and same thing like the gym, you take things further and further, add more weight, add, and eventually you reach your goal. Yeah. Yeah. you got to get to a baseline where you can act. There's stuff going on under the surface, whether you can see the results from the outside or not. It's like roots are being dug before the, the tree grows upward and you got to let the roots dig. So, um, there's a thing, uh, a really important thing. I would love to hear how you address it. There's a lot of guys, this is super common. I'm sure you see it all the time. They're super, they go do, let's say they're doing these, I'm walking just towards women because I can't even say hi. And I'm doing it 50 mm -hmm. times. About 10 times in, they start beating themselves up because they haven't let it go yet. They just, they constantly, everything's not good enough. I should be doing better by now. I should be doing better by now. I should be doing better by now. And there's this sense of real brutal self-attack, which again, will keep them stuck in that position for years if they don't deal with that self-attack. What, what do you do with those kind of guys? Yeah. And that's, again, that's where the inner game comes in. That's why it's such a balance. You have to do the action and you have to work on your thoughts and your beliefs and your, your mindset and your feelings. So yeah, with guys like that, it makes, it's difficult with guys like that. Yeah, you is. have to, yeah, you got to train them to look at what was great about every interaction. So one exercise I have guys do is basically after every interaction, say what was great about that interaction even if it was just walking towards her and they didn't even have an interaction. Okay. That might seem silly, but what was great about that? Okay. At least I'm conditioning myself to do it. At least I saw a cute girl and I didn't hesitate this time. I, you know, I walked towards her, you know, that might be it. Maybe it's just those two things. And then how could you have taken it further? That's, that's the second question to ask yourself or how could you have improved? And the answer to that is, well, I could have asked her for directions or whatever. Yeah, I, I, I do the same thing. Uh, I have them journal it uh, a lot, too, especially in the beginning, because I want them to read it before they go to bed at night so they can, uh, it's the last thing they see before they go uh, go to bed so they can take it into their dreams. Um, 
that's yeah that's i think great. I, yeah i think journaling in the morning and at night are, is really good like same yeah. thing with like whether you're doing affirmations or visualizing whatever your inner game routine is and it doesn't have to be long it could be 10 minutes but you do it in the morning and before bed because bed just like you said it goes into your dreams into your subconscious in the morning you're still kind of in that subconscious state a little bit you know you're just waking up it's a good way to just kind of start your day you know and then yeah. boom you do your most important thing for the day after you do your five minute inner game routine yeah. well let's take a question um the first question we've got on the board and this kind of relates is from Erdal. I hope I hope I'm saying your name right. E R D A L. And uh, it says, "Hi Brian, I'm going to give this question to you though. Hi Brian, do you think approaching women cold is necessary when developing the skill sets?" And so I'm going to hand that to you, Matt. Okay, so <laughs> in the winter time, no. Um, well, <laughs> I like the idea. Like basically, what what we described is like starting small, working your way up, like asking for directions. Again, using the gym analogy, it's kind of like warming up. You go to the gym, you do a five, 10 minute warm up where you're you know, stretching and doing lighter weights. Same thing when you go out specifically to approach women, you say, hey, I'm gonna go out for an hour and I'm gonna do five direct approaches. Whatever your goal is, it's a great idea, especially when you're starting out to just start with warm up approaches, which could be, which could be just saying hi, it could be asking for directions. It could be talking to somebody that works at a store. So I think that's what you mean by cold is, you know, when you just see a beautiful woman and you haven't you know, had any interactions with anybody that day and you just walk up to her, you do want to get to that point where you can and will do that because you'll miss opportunities if you don't. But at least in the beginning, give yourself like three to five kind of easy warm up approaches because they get your your juices flowing, right? The, your, the, your verbal muscles get lubricated. Um, I definitely have to do this when I go to bars or I don't have to, but I like to do this when I go to bars, like start talking to people because it's such a crazy, you know, environment compared to a mall where you got to be at, you know, a much, bars, much so. higher level. <laughs> What's that? I, thought you did, I didn't even think you liked bars. So, um, I don't yeah. drink too much and I don't smoke and, you know, I'm not really into club music, but you know, if there's pretty girls there, then I like it. <laughs> well, it's, it's, I, yeah. it's a good reason to go. Um, okay. Let me ask you this. Uh, here's another question. Um, it's a little confusing. So let's play with it a little bit. Um, hey Matt, what is it? Uh, what is when a girl, uh, basically when a girl shuts you off right off the bat and you're stuck there, what are the steps you go through? when you don't know why they shut you off right off the bat. So I, I don't know if he's asking internal steps or, mm -hmm. or uh, external, like what do you do to deal with it? Um, how would you take that? I think just ask yourself those two questions again. That's first thing I would do. Um, if that interaction is over, it sounds like that's what he means. The interaction is over, what do you do? Um, ask yourself what was great about it because it's very easy to get into a negative space when you had an interaction that didn't go the way you wanted, you know, rejection, if you want to call it that, which I don't like calling it that, but that's another thing. Um, but asking yourself, what was great about that? Cause you might feel kind of pissed off. You might, you know, you're going to feel some negative feelings potentially. So ask yourself, what was great about that? And always the answer is, well, I did it. I approached, which I didn't let fear overcome. You know, I, I chose courage over fear, which is great because courage is like a muscle in a sense. Um, Very much so, yeah. Yeah, you know. So you're also just conditioning yourself to approach. So no, no matter how bad the interaction was, it's always good in it. And probably learned a lesson. Maybe don't approach in that way again. Or maybe it had nothing to do with you. Maybe she was just in a bad mood. It had nothing to do with you. Um, it had everything to do with her reality, right? Somebody weird approached her right before you and she's just not in a good mood anymore, whatever. But you still got something out of it because you have to condition yourself to take action. You have to overcome fear. So it's, I like to look at it like this too. This is kind of going back to approaching anxiety, right? You get a bad reaction, you get a rejection, whatever, whatever your worst case scenario is but you still get something out of that. Even if it's a 10 second interaction, you just walk up to her and she says, fuck off. Um, which rarely happens by the way, 
But let's say that's the worst case scenario. You still got those things out of it, like I mentioned. Best case scenario is whatever that is to you. It could be taking her home that night. It could be she becomes your girlfriend. Whatever best case scenario. When you compare those two things, worst case scenario, you got a, a little bit out of it, right? You learned something. You conditioned yourself to approach. You chose courage instead of fear, right? That's actually big. I don't even consider that small. Um, but, you know, and then, of course, the big win is <laughs> taking her home or whatever. That's pretty awesome. I mean, that's like playing a slot machine in Vegas and you can't lose. It's like putting 10 bucks in and you get 20 bucks out no matter what every single time. But once in a while you hit the jackpot, it's like a no brainer. You do that all the time. Like every chance you get approach when you have that mentality, knowing that nothing bad can happen. And again, that's conditioning yourself to see what was great about every approach. And, and you know, you and be honest, too. It's not about just bullshitting yourself and saying, oh, let's always think positive. No, what was good about the approach and what could have been better? Just ask yourself those two questions. You'll figure out something. And I, I, I see guys out there that do get good without really approaching at all, like online game and social circle game. But honestly, when I look at them, if they're, if they're completely avoiding approaching, or and they're they're relying 100 percent on online and, and social circle there's usually some type of self-esteem issue going on uh, that's been my opinion is there's something and why wouldn't you want to go after that i mean you don't have to become an approach master but he, let's say you go out and just approach a little bit just to work on your your social confidence how much more free in life are you going to be how much happier are you going to be unrelated to women altogether let's say i'm just out having fun with my friends, I'm going to be, I'm going to get better at being more saying my, speaking my mind, being more boisterous, having fun, expressing myself and life just becomes better. I, I, I can't see, like you said, there's no losing that. So it's yeah, because nice. you, you become a man who goes for what you want. Even if you are successful at meeting women in a certain situation, let's say you own a restaurant or a club or something, you meet women that way. And you're like, why meet women any other way? But you're going to see beautiful women just walking down the street once in a while. You don't have to become the guy that's like, okay, every day for one hour, I go to the mall. That's great. I do recommend you do become that guy. But even if you're doing great on online game or whatever else, you're going to see women that you're attracted to. If you're a single guy, then why not at least go say hi to them? You know, it's going to take you 30 seconds to do that. Yep, I agree. There's, there's no yeah. loss, a lot to gain. Okay, we got one more approach anxiety question I want to ask here, and then I want to start moving into conversation. Um, so I think it's an interesting question. Um, and I think we kind of covered it, but I'm just going to ask it anyways, just because maybe he's not seeing it from this frame. What, what, uh, uh, it comes from A, he just put A for the name. What about the first moment of awkwardness after an approach? How do I reframe that tension to let it be and maintain the conversation? You know, like a lot, of you, a lot of you, when they first, this is how I see it, a lot of you, when they first approach, they, it goes well, they're really good at approaching, but as soon as they start talking, anxiety starts to build, and then they have to eventually, they run away and get scared, because now I've been in the conversation a minute, it's starting to work, she likes me, oh shit, I better get out of here, or she doesn't like me, or everything she does, they're reading now, because, oh my god, I got past the approach, what do I do? That's the energy I'm kind of looking at. Mm -hmm. And I, I think what most people try to do is just memorize a bunch of things to say so that that doesn't happen. So they can always fill those gaps, those moments of silence. And that becomes really hard. And then you become really in your head, always trying to think of what to say next instead of just kind of like being there. And I know, I know you talk a lot about that. So I recommend... I mean, yeah, it is. That's why having a framework of where to take the interaction can be really helpful. So you're not just like, okay, I, I said hi, uh, what do I do now? Because that, you know, that's not really memorizing a whole lot. Um, and the framework I usually recommend is starting direct, compliment, then go into some sort of after you introduce yourself, qualification. You know, because you, you don't know anything about her, you got to find out if she's even somebody you want to like take things further and go on a date with. And then just getting her phone number or closing or going on an instant date. And that whole process can take three or four minutes. And so there's not really much to think about with that. And we can get deeper into that. But I think the true answer to this question. You there? You froze a little bit. <clears throat> Give that a second. Um, Am I back? Oh, you're back. 
Yeah, okay. yeah. So the true answer, we heard, I think the true answer to this question and then you froze. Oh yeah, the, the deeper <laughs> fix to this problem is to become, I think, is to become comfortable in uncomfortable situations, which goes back again to approach anxiety and being comfortable with those feelings. Freezing again, bud. One, two, hopefully he comes back in a second, guys. Um, so there's a, uh, why, while Matt works this out, hey, you're back. Okay, being comfortable with those feelings is what you said, and then you froze again. Yeah, sorry about that. I'm not sure how to fix that freezing. Um, it's just bandwidth. Is just being comfortable in income in uncomfortable situations, putting yourself in uncomfortable situations, getting out of your comfort zone, and be, and then. And we got another one. We may have to Matt uh, take. I might have to just reduce. Uh, have you turn off your camera or something for a little bit. A lot okay. of times, that's using a lot of bandwidth. So see if that kills. Sorry guys. I know you like looking at Matt's beautiful face, but uh, are you still there? Okay, so what he was talking about right there until he comes back. Uh, are you there? Yeah, can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, so let's just see if that works. Okay, okay. Yeah, we if not, nice, maybe I can <clears throat> We I can gotta move. get a picture of you using those smoky eyes, you know, that you probably use on girls all the time, so. Oh yeah, that's, a, that's a, from ABC Nightline uh, a while right. back. Anyways, good job. <laughs> um, what I was saying is becoming comfortable in uncomfortable situations, getting out of your comfort zone, doing things that don't feel great. And then when you're in those situations that don't feel great, when you're getting nervous or any uncomfortable emotions are creeping up, it becomes manageable. It doesn't affect you because you're used to it. I think that's a big cause of approach anxiety because we, we really live in a society nowadays where we don't have to take a lot of risks. We don't have to be uncomfortable. Most of us have nice jobs in desks or things like that. You know, we're not always fighting wars or, you know, have jobs where we have to kill for our food and things like that. We can literally just stay home, work from our laptops, have food ordered to us, and literally never go outside if we want to. And, and we just live pretty safe, secure life, which is great for safety purposes, but it's not great for confidence and growing courage and being uncomfortable you know, or, or being, being managing that uncomfortable feeling when we go talk to a pretty girl. So yeah. I think well, just, you're really describing confidence right there. I mean, what's the core of confidence? It's this idea that, uh, that you actually enjoy being uncomfortable, it's courage. It's just like you said, you enjoy, yeah. I mean, you can go to look at a roller coaster and you can say, I don't wanna get on that, that's scary. Or that's scary, I can't wait to get on it. Those are two different mindsets, right? Or jumping out of a plane, skydiving. Um, and then, and those are physical actions. So in the case of a woman, it's more of an emotional. It's like going and facing your emotions. Oh, this is scary, I can't wait to do it. Or this is scary, I don't wanna do it. And um, people really respect the person that can do the one. This is scary. I can't wait to do it. And I think that can really be developed. And I think you're talking about how to do that. So, yeah, it's uh, really about facing your fears. And it, you can, it's not just approaching women. I mean, that is the bulk of what we're talking about. But you can do it in other parts of your life, too. Like I mentioned just quickly, like the ice, ice bath thing. Like that's something that's uncomfortable. It's kind of scary in a sense. But, you know, if you do, if you get used to doing things like that and just putting yourself in uncomfortable situations, like I try to take a cold shower every day, um, you know, things like that, that are just uncomfortable and then just feeling calm in that uncomfortable situation, allowing myself to just breathe instead of like trembling, like, ah, oh, this sucks. I hate this. Uh, why do I do this to myself? Uh, instead, I'm just like, okay, ah, oh, this sucks, but let me just find the joy in it and just like getting present and grounded in that uncomfortable situation, then it doesn't really matter. Like when you can't think of anything to say and you start feeling uncomfortable, you just allow that pause to be there, allow that tension and 
eventually something will happen. You'll come up with something to say, most likely, or she will say something. It's probably not going to be 10 minutes of silence. You know, yeah. and you'll be surprised at how long a girl will sit there that you just approached in the middle of the daytime or at a bar or anywhere, the brand new interaction, how long she will sit there in silence waiting for you to speak. And if you're comfortable in that silence, then everything is fine. Well, girls love presence. I mean, when a guy is quiet, I, I used to use this all the time, what you're talking about. Uh, when I first figured it out was just shut up and be present. And now, now. It's very different than when I used to just shut up and get nervous. Completely different subcommunication. And the girls would always leave when I was nervous because I would test it, actually. I would switch between the two. Can I get anxious? Now can I just ground and let my body be calm? And when I stayed calm, and I, would, I even tried this for a while. I just wouldn't say anything at work. I'm being really calm, holding space, keeping a nice container with her, and not say a word. And, I'm, and every time, she would restart the conversation. And, so, and every time I got nervous, she would want to run away. And um, says girls are just addicted to guys that are present. So you find yeah. that to be. Ab absolutely. And I think it also has to do with like emotional contagion or, you know, the concept that emotions are transferable. So how you're feeling, she's going to feel. So a guy that approaches really nervous that's not going to feel good. She's going to start feeling that nervousness too. And it's not, nobody really wants to feel that, but if you feel totally comfortable, present, and you're just totally at ease, like she's going to feel good there. And even if you're not talking, it's like, everything's okay. Yeah. Um, and so, and that kind of goes back to the turn on that you, that you mentioned earlier too. Like when you're turned on and you're looking at her, like, you want to just devour her. You're not saying anything specifically. You could be talking about the weather, whatever, but you're looking at her with that intention that's going to turn her on. Like you can literally get a girl turned on within seconds of meeting her. It's really fun to play around with that. Oh yeah. I, I, I it happens all the time. You know, girls don't go out saying, I hope I don't meet uh, an interesting guy today. I, you know, girls love it when they meet interesting guys, guys that turn them on. Mm -hmm. Um, there's, there's a question here from a guy named Peter, um, guitar, Peter, uh, however, however you say it. Um, uh, and I kind of want to uh, throw it to you. It's a little bit of an energetic question. Um, hi, Brian. When I'm more in my body, my energy from my eyes is weaker, is what he's saying. And when I use my gut to speak, it gets inflated and I start losing that calmness. Um, do, you have, do you have something you want to say about that? I would kind of want to know what he means by his eyes get weaker. <clears throat> it's, 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 a little, it's a little vague. Um, I mean, I would just play around with different, you know, emotions that he's feeling and yeah, it's an interesting question. I, I would I'd guess. Like, that, I'd like to hear your answer. I would guess that he's got some apathy or numbness stored in his body and he's probably feeling those parts of his body from his head. He's not actually in his body. He's looking at those parts. He's looking at his gut from his head or he's looking at his, um, his, uh, his it, it, whatever body part he's trying to feel from his head. I see guys do this all the time. They try to meditate from their head and swear that because they're focused on that part of the body, they think they're in that part of the body and, and they have to reverse that polarity. So there's a sense of instead of looking at <clears throat> what is my stomach feeling and looking at it from my, uh, from my, from my point of consciousness, I let the feeling of my stomach come to my point of consciousness and I reverse that. Let it come to me versus me going to it. And that usually starts to change that feeling. It gets more uncomfortable at first. And then you'll probably get more anxiety for a while and you gotta ride the wave of that anxiety until it starts to go away. It might actually get worse when you get better. And um, I think something to also play, yeah, I think you said that perfectly. I think something also to play with as far as like feeling your body and what we're talking about, like getting in tune with your turn on is also just something you could play with or try out guys is thinking about your best sexual experience before you go and approach her. Like think about like when you rocked a girl's world. I mean, and you can think about that like just for a second, like while you're talking to her as well. Um, some people do it different ways. Some people just like think about that girl that they're about to approach and think, you know, they're going to 
have an intimate experience with her and that can kind of get them into that kind of more grounded and, and also sexual state. Um, but what I like to do is just think of like, you know, some amazing experience I had. And if you've never had one, you can just make one up in your mind too. just see yourself real quick, you know, doing something, you know, rocking a girl's world or getting an amazing blow job. And that's just going to change your demeanor too. You're not going to go up to her and be like, Hey, I just saw you here. I thought you were cute. It's not going to be like that. You're going to be more smooth. It's going to, there's going to be a hint of sexuality in your voice. Nice. Um, and then I, I think that helps guys who have a hard time like seeing the girl they're talking to and feeling that kind of towards her. And it's not like feeling necessarily like, oh, I'm going to fuck this girl that I'm talking to. But it's just like appreciating her beauty. Like as you're talking to her, you're just appreciating, you know, that creature in front of you and just enjoying her beauty and her femininity. Yeah, I think that's powerful. That's I mean, that's really the key. It's so simple in the end, but uh, it's hard until it's simple. <laughs> um, yeah, let's. Uh, let's yeah, it took me a long time to figure this out. I mean, I went through all the lines and routines and all of that. I mean, and then it yeah, came down to this kind of stripping a lot throw, of that away. It's like dance steps. Eventually, you got to just throw out all the basics and just move. Um, you um, can you talk a little bit about what you're so good at conversation? Well, how do these guys get a good conversation going and flowing? So I think one of the first steps is to become comfortable just saying anything because guys like always want to have these perfect conversations with women and say the right things. And that ends up kind of kicking them in the ass because the, the woman can feel that intention that he's trying to be perfect and say all the right things or impress her. So I recommend going out one night, like when, it, when we're talking about running out of things to say, Go out one night and just say whatever is on your mind. And you you might offend some girls. You might, you know, say some stupid things and the inter interaction is over. But again, you know, you analyze the interaction afterwards. What was great about it and what could you have done differently? And then you have another interaction. But it gives yourself permission to just talk about whatever you want to talk about. So I think that's a great exercise to do and it will help you worry a lot less about saying the right thing or just saying anything because you could literally have a conversation about just about anything. And then yeah. I think another problem is guys think they have to talk and do all this thing, do all these things to win the girl over, you know, demonstrate their high value and and have all these stories planned and great conversation. And really, I mean you can really get the girl to talk about herself most of the time. I mean, yeah, you're going to have to talk and relate and have stories, but I mean, get the girl talking. I mean, in the beginning, you know, you might be doing 70% of the talking in the first five minutes, but eventually you want to get to the point where she's doing a lot of the talking and you're learning about her and trying to find out if she is somebody that, you know, clicks with you and vibes with you. And it becomes a mindset that you're the selector, but you're, you know, you're curious about her. You want to know, like, what is she passionate about? What are her dreams and hopes and goals? And, you know, what kind of crazy adventures has she been on? And you learn about her. And, of course, you relate to those things as well. You don't want to just ask a million questions. Um, you know, it becomes a balance of asking a question, learning about her, being curious about her, and then relating to it. And that relating can just be a quick sentence. It could be like, Wow, I've never done anything like that. Tell me more. <laughs> you know, just it could be one sentence. Even if you've never done it, you talk about how you've never done it. Wow, I've never done that. I've always wanted to do that. That sounds so cool. What got you into that? I uh, I love what you're saying. Um, I really love that one exercise. We just go out and say whatever you spend a day saying, what, or even a week, just saying whatever you feel and letting go of the need for outcome. Uh, because you might be surprised at what will end up working if you just focus on you and stuff and stop worrying about her. Um, I think that's great. The um, the other thing, a curiosity, because you were talking about curiosity, really asking questions, like asking her what's what's you know, I want to know about you. I want to know more about you. That's a really important thing to do. And so many guys are so bad at this, asking questions. They're either they don't ask questions and they talk too much and they're terrible listeners or number two is they ask a lot of questions but 
they do it all from that eager, nice guy, needy, like, oh, really? Tell me more perspective where there's no sense of themselves, you know, no sense of their own balls. And uh, and they sound like they're interviewing. What uh, what um, uh, what advice do you have for those guys that are really needy when they ask the questions? And, and every time they ask questions, it just doesn't work for them because they, they don't understand that there's a different way to ask the questions. Right. Yeah, they're they're asking the question. It's even just a tonality of just asking a question in just a tonality. It's like, oh, please tell me more. I'm so interested in you. I like you so much, which turns the girl off because girls want to be liked and desired. But if it's too much too soon, she didn't have to earn it. It sounds desperate if you're showing too much interest too soon. Um, so I recommend you start being a challenge. Now, you know, how do you do that? How do you actually be a challenge? Well, one thing you can do, because you need to actually embody that mindset that you are a challenge, you are selecting her. You know, it's not just the other way around. Yes, she's selecting you too. Um, it's not about being better than anybody or being better than women. It's we are on equal playing fields. But instead of having that mindset that, oh, I got to go to the bar and I'll take any girl that will have me and I'll just approach every girl and whoever will, will have me, I'll go home with, um, you know, doesn't work as well. It doesn't attract the really beautiful women most of the time. So instead, kind of having a, a I am the prize qualification mindset where you, you know, in the beginning, sometimes you just ask a girl a qualification question, like, well, tell me something interesting about you because I don't know anything about you and I don't know if we can, you know, hang out yet. Um, and inside, maybe you're like, oh my God, I haven't talked to a girl in a long, long time and you really want her. But if you keep asking questions like that, eventually you'll actually, you'll, you'll care about the answer. I mean, you should care about the answer right away. But, you know, in the beginning, sometimes the, the testosterone takes over and you just want to sleep with the girl. But this, you know, just just asking those kind of questions coming from a place where you're not sure about her yet. Eventually, you'll believe it. You will become a man who is a challenge to women. And that's what they want. They want that balance of a man who desires them but who's not too easy, doesn't desire them too much and is like, oh, I like you so much, you're so hot, I'll do anything you want. But it also has that balance of being a challenge. So part of embodying that mindset is just asking those kind of questions. That's the outer game. But the inner game is actually becoming, you know, actually seeing yourself as that kind of guy, like doing things that make you feel better about yourself, accomplishing your goals. And I mean, we can go into a whole thing of like how to build confidence, but it's basically, it all comes down to confidence again, right? Once you have that confidence in yourself and your confidence, knowing that you can attract beautiful women, then of course you naturally become a challenge and confidence is something you got to work on, on a, you know, a daily basis to keep raising that confidence. And approaching women is one way to do that because you start getting better and better at it. And then you see yourself as a good catch and you see, you know that, oh, I can actually go to a bar, walk down the street or approach a girl. And I know, you know, I don't get every girl, but I know I can attract beautiful women and it takes yeah. time. But just like anything, you know, going to the gym the first time, I'm not going to feel confident. I'm not going to think I'm a great bodybuilder, but if I do it for a year, three days a week, five days a week, eventually I'm going to feel pretty confident in my physique. Yes. And, you know, it's the same kind of thing. Yeah. Well, I want to, I want to cover, I want to see if there's any one last conversational piece you want to add. And then I'm going to go through a couple quick questions and uh, probably close this out because we're almost at an hour. Um, Cause I know we started to cover conversation we just covered really the basics. I mean, you know, yeah. for hours on end. Um, and uh, so I want to, is there anything that these guys, like, I know you like to talk a lot about uh, what you call your version of qualification, how you do it. Um, and uh, I don't know if that, what do you think is the most important thing for them to hear right now? That's a good piece for them to take with them. Well, I think the simplest thing is just to kind of have a framework of a conversation. And, and this, there's many ways. I mean, this is, you know, obviously a lot of different directions you can take a conversation. Um, but when you see a girl walking down the street, it's usually going to be a short interaction. Like I said, three minutes, maybe five minutes. I, th I think anything past that, you should go on a date with her. You should go on an instant date with her. 
And then it's kind of, you know, a different dynamic at that point. You're not just the guy who's approached her and you're now on a date. So, but initially that conversation, a lot of it should be you trying to find out who she is and finding out if <clears throat> like what's special about her, what's cool about her. Like, do I want to go on a date with her more? What's important about her more than her looks? Yeah, she's beautiful. That's the reason I approached her. But what is beyond that? And so yeah. it's asking those questions. It doesn't have to be just questions. It could be making statements. It could be cold reading. There's lots of techniques to do it. And it doesn't matter really which technique you choose. It could just be as, as simple as just asking her a question. It could be you see her, you run up to her, you say, hey, this is totally out of the blue. I know you're busy, but I just saw you here and I had to come over and say hi. And you could add in a compliment if you want. I, you know, I had to come meet you. I thought you're really pretty. My name is Matt, right? Introduce yourself. And then you might ask her how her day is going if you want. I mean, that doesn't really do too much as far as like, you know, attracting her or anything like that. Um, but really, that's not what you're trying to do. You, you want to get out of that mindset of even trying to attract women. It sounds so counterintuitive, but when you're trying to attract them, then it's like you have to do all these things. Instead, just be attractive. I know that sounds, you know, sounds, well, how do you do that? And that's really everything we've been talking about on this call. But anyways, going back to conversation, because I could lose check. Um, you know, you could ask her how her day's going. You can make a little small talk. You know, it's not going to hurt anything by doing that. In fact, that can be good because you find out her logistics. If she says, oh, I'm in a hurry, I got to go meet my friends, then you know an instant date is probably out of the question. But at some point before you go for her number, I mean, you should want to know more about her than just, oh, it's a hot girl and she's shopping and she's going to go meet her friends. Like that shouldn't be enough for you. You should have higher standards than that. So ask, could one option is ask a qualification type question like, well, I don't know anything about you. I don't know if we can hang out yet. So tell me one cool thing about you. And she might well, say, well, I don't know. What do you, what do you mean? Or she might say, that's a weird question. It doesn't matter. Then, you know, narrow it down to something specific. Like, well, what are you passionate about? And the way I see this, see what she this, says. Is, this is almost more than a technique. This is an exercise, what you're doing. Uh, it's an exercise in you saying as a man, like literally when you go up to a woman, you don't know if you like her, you might not even be able to stand hanging out with her for 10 minutes. Sure. She's sexy. That's why you went up to her. But, you guys got to figure out really quickly and for real whether he actually wants to hang out with this girl because he may not want to. I mean, just because she's hot, but if she's, uh, if you two just don't mesh, there's really no point in hanging out. And by doing that question, you're legitimately developing that part of yourself. If you consciously think about it, you're developing that part of yourself that says, wait a minute, what do I want? You know, do I like this girl? Do I want to be with this girl? Do I want to get to know this girl? Because if I don't, I don't want to waste her time or my time. And that's a really powerful frame. That's a really powerful mindset, I think. Yeah, so. and it's really all about that mindset. And like you said, it's an exercise. And the exercise can be like figuring out what are those things that you want in a woman? What are those non-physical qualities? And also, what are the things that you don't want? What are your deal breakers? And yeah. as another exercise, you go out and you find those those maybe not all of those questions, you might have like 10 qualities you want, you're not going to ask all those questions, but you figure out like, you know, one or two important things. And you qualify women on those really quickly. And if they don't meet that standard, you end the interaction in a polite way, you don't try to make her feel bad for not meeting your standards, but you might end the interaction. And that can be a huge shift for guys. They're like, wow, I just basically said no to this hot girl. You know, so yeah. for example, it could be like smokers. Maybe you definitely don't want to date smokers. So you might ask that as your qualification question early on. And if she says, no, I don't smoke, you say, okay, good. And maybe you ask another question, a uh, qualification question. But if she says, yeah, I do smoke, then you end the interaction. You know, say, oh, well, you know, I don't date smokers, but anyways, have an awesome day. You know, yeah. something like that. I think it's powerful. I think just going out to specifically work on that. Uh, having standards and and putting them out there is so powerful for getting guys past the nice guy, getting back them past this idea that I got to make everybody happy. Um, great yeah. exercise. 
Um, so I, I look at everything as more of an exercise rather than a technique. Like how can I develop more self-esteem by using this? And I, I think that's, that's why I don't look at it even as qualification. I look at it as building your own personal sense of self-esteem by doing it. Um, okay, we got two questions. I wanna pop these two questions out and then we gotta end this call. Um, so this one is from Lakshaya. Um, hey, can you help me with my tonality? I think I'm uh, really bad at it. Either I'm really low in my voice or I'm not going, uh, or I'm not going down at the end of my sentences, which really freaks me, uh, freaks me off every time. Uh, I always try to improve on this, but end up doing it all the wrong way. Can you help me with anything to improve my tonality? Um, uh, please take the question. Is <laughs> what he wrote at the end. <laughs> Let's take it. Go for it. Uh, really well, quick, before before you answer the question, guys, um, if you want to learn more about what Matt does, because we're really touching the tip of the iceberg, there's so much really solid advice he can be giving you. And um, we're going to be doing uh, the Infinite Man Summit. Excuse me, Infinite Man. Why did I say that? The uh, Integrated Man Summit and, um, in Miami at the end of um, uh end of September, beginning of November, right? Did I have that right? But anyways, the, uh, the dates and the times and everything for it are gonna be coming up on your screen here really quick. Um, uh, make sure to check it out. There's gonna be a lot of great speakers there. Uh, I'll be there speaking. Uh, Dave Stoltz, my business partner will be there. Matt will be there. Um, Zan Perion will be there. Uh, Ruan, Ruando, uh, sexuality expert. Um, and uh, it's, it's something I've been wanting to do for years. It is gonna help you guys really understand what it is to develop true presence and true confidence. That's what this group is about. A group of men that get what it is to be present, get what it is to, to be turned on by, by women and with women, to have standards, to be solid, to be masculine. Men that have moved beyond technique and to some powerful feeling. So if you feel like you're a man that's been having trouble trying to figure out what to say, and you know it's not really about what to say, it's about who you're being, and this is definitely something you wanna check out. If you have trouble with your self-esteem, your self-confidence, if you stumble over your words, if you have approach anxiety, if you want to uh, uh, learn what it is to be truly expressive in a masculine way, then this, program, this, this, uh, this summit is for you. It's called the um, Integrated Man Summit, and uh, there should be an advertisement coming up for it now. If not, make sure to let us know. And uh, I would love to meet you in person, so make sure you say hi if you decide to come to the, the summit. And uh, you can meet Matt and really dig into some of these deep concepts uh, with him in person, too. Okay, Matt, go ahead. Do you remember the question, tonality? Yeah, specifically, the question was going down at the ends of his sentences. And I think, yeah, I mean, really... Um, he said, he's either really low in my voice or not going down, those two things, like maybe monotone is what he's saying. Mm, yeah, because usually low in your voice is not a bad thing. Yeah, um, I'm guessing, I guess he means monotone. Yeah, I mean, I think, uh, the, 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 I mean, he's already conscious of it, and that's a huge step that he's aware of it. And then it's just practicing it in all conversations. So that's one thing, like just focus on your tonality. Stop focusing on what to say and and just focus on being more expressive. So like as I'm talking right now, I can change my tonality and I can make it sound different, more expressive, you know, in different ways. And just doing that is like an exercise, like just going out and just work on just going up and down in your tonality. And, and yes, yeah, so at the end of your sentences, you know, like, for example, if I ask a qualification question, like, tell me something interesting about you. You know, even though I did go down a little bit there, obviously, it's not a very powerful, challenging tonality versus so tell me something interesting about you. I don't know anything about you. Right. There's a big difference there. It's almost like op opposites. It's like night and day there. One is needy. The other is challenging. Um, and then what was the other thing I was going to say? There are some exercises as far as tonality that I do every day. There's one by Roger Love. Um, so you guys can look that up if you want. It's n it's more just to have a, 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 like a thicker timbre and just more resonance to your voice. Um, believe it or not, yeah, my voice was way worse a long time ago. It was a lot more high pitched and I was talking more like this, like from my head voice and it didn't sound very good or authoritative at all. Um, and it's something I just keep working on. 
And then, oh, the other thing I was going to say is doing something like acting classes, which I have done for about three months, which really help you become more expressive, especially if it's tonality. Because if tonality is usually maybe a, it, it's it's probably a deeper thing than just like he's speaking like this. It's probably not accessing other emotions like just, you know, in his body. So acting class will really help with that. Also, improv comedy class can definitely help with you being more expressive, not just in your tonality, but just in your whole being. So I recommend those. Awesome. Yeah, uh, I agree. Just, uh, I always like to look at the improv teacher and make sure that he's not being super needy. Uh, it's one of my things too. Uh, okay guys, we got too many more questions to be able to answer them. I told one more, so I'm going to look really quick. Um, uh, so get on the next call if you want to get some, or get to the event if you want to get these questions answered, because the event is going to be amazing. It's something I'm super excited to put on. Um, uh, more serious. Okay. Let me ask this question. I think it's a, uh, let's see, one of these two is this confidence interview. Um, if a girl you know was viewing you as a champion and now doesn't respect you anymore, this is from Ham, because you were too needy or she just hangs out with other guys, what can you do to reverse that? I'd like to hear uh, your take on this and, uh, or your personal experiences. So I think if you're focused on one specific girl that's already needy, you're saying, oh, I need her. I got I to gotta attract her. I got to win her back. I would focus on just, A, working on this part of your life and becoming more confident, doing things that raise your confidence. By the way, we have a confidence cheat sheet, too, um, that I can send you guys. Um, so just doing that, working on yourself, not focusing so much on this one particular girl. And then the other thing is just going out and meeting more girls. And sometimes what happens is when you're out meeting other girls and working on this part of your life, sometimes that girl that you had the one-itis with magically comes back because now you're not needy. Now you're not focused only on her. And she sees that you have other options. You're posting things on Instagram and Facebook, wherever, of you having fun life and you with other girls and you having a good time, and she sees that. Um, and sometimes she comes back, but it, it shouldn't even really be about her. It should be about you and working on your this part of your life and maybe, you, I shouldn't even say maybe, most likely you'll meet somebody who is a lot more compatible. Yeah, that's perfect. Uh, I agree with you 100% on that. Um, I'm going to ask you one last question because I think you're a good guy to answer this question. I think you'll have a good answer for it. It's from Leonardo. Um, I see you guys talk about confidence. Some people say it's all about fun and humor. What do you guys advise to the more serious guys? Is, is just confidence and energy enough or is it necessary to implement some fun in the interaction? Yeah, I think that's a good question. I, th I think, yeah. So here's my answer. Confidence is like definitely number one. I mean, even women will definitely admit to that. But if you're just like, that's all there is, like she's not even having fun with you and you're Mr. Serious, then, you know, that's going to get old for most women. They want to have joy. They want to do things that are fun and have joy and things like that. So it's not even to be, it's not even about being funny. Um, it's just about not taking yourself too serious. You know, it's always, there's always going to be dichotomies in this, right? We talked a lot about, oh, showing the desire, but then also being a challenge. Those are two dichotomies. If you're too far on one end of the spectrum, it's, it's not going to work as well as it could. And same thing with like being so like confident, but also serious, like, oh, I'm, you know, alpha male, you know, Mr. Macho man, and I think of myself as so serious all the time, that's going to get old for a lot of women too. So it's having that, that, I think that's another dichotomy is that confidence, that alpha male masculine presence, and then also having the fun side where you don't take yourself too seriously and you're a positive person. Because you, you can be a confident man, but also be a total dick or a total you know, negative person and just be mean to people and put people down. And that's obviously not a winning recipe. So a better recipe is having a mix. So yes, I think 
<laughs> work on that playful side as well. Yeah, I see very outgoing men that are technically very confident, but very mean, like low self-esteem, but very confident. And they get women, I see some of these guys, but they get women that are just as miserable as they are. And they have miserable relationships and they have a miserable time. And, and, uh, and God, it just looks worse. It looks horrible to me. <laughs> and yeah, uh, it's no fun. No, none at all. Um, okay, uh, I wanna thank you for being on the call. I think that was great. And I, I personally, I think that playfulness is important, but it needs, it's just, you don't have to have a lot. Sprinkle it in, you know, and, and work on the confidence primarily and add in some playfulness and some, and some humor. And I th it doesn't take much. You, some of these guys, I, I get the picture that they're gonna go out and try to become the dancing monkey. And that's, yeah, you know, that guy. That's just ridiculous. You don't, um, don't be that guy. No, I was that guy. <laughs> I, I, I was for a bit too. Um, so uh, with all this said, I want to thank you guys for being on the call. I want to thank Matt for being on the call. Um, it's always yeah, Thanks for having me, Brian. Yeah, yeah, you're welcome. It's uh, He's really developed a strong sense of presence, so it doesn't take much for him to meet women. It's just simple highs, how you doing, simple questions, simple conversation, a sprinkle of humor. And that's why I really want Matt to be at this uh, at the Integrated Man Summit because he gets that. So uh, if you guys want to meet him in person and really take this a lot deeper, this is going to be a three-day event in Miami. You guys want to be out there with all the hot Latinas um, and you want to uh, have an amazing time meeting like-minded men. If you're having trouble learning to talk to women, you're having trouble with approaching, there's a lot of pain around that. You're, having, you're beating yourself up all the time. You don't know how to get past that. You don't, uh, you don't sit there and, and, and really know who you are and what you want uh, and that's and women can feel that then this is definitely an event for you come out meet Matt meet me meet Dave meet uh, uh, Zan Perion the legendary Zan uh, and the fearless coaches and team and um, and learn something have some fun one of the number one things that you guys can do to really develop a powerful skill set is to get around like-minded people or people headed in the direction you want to go it's the thing that changed everything for me it's the reason I'm sitting here right now Every time I've ever wanted to succeed at something, I surround myself with like-minded individuals. I surround myself with people that are already headed in that direction. So get to this event because it's one of the most powerful, it's the, it's the thing that changed my life is getting to events and meeting people. Uh, but it's very affordable and uh, hey, it's in Miami and at a perfect time of year to be in Miami. So check out the, uh, there's a little ad for it up on the page. And um, with that said, is there anything you wanna say, Matt? Is there any, um, did you wanna give your website or any information? Yeah, definitely. Um, we have a free conversation cheat sheet at theattractiveman.com because we talked a lot about you know what to say and how to have great conversations with women. And we didn't really, you know, I didn't really give any like, hey, conversation topics or questions and things like that techniques. So um, check out that conversation cheat sheet because when you are grounded and when you know you're you're in a present and, and more confident state and then these techniques work really really well and you got to say something right so check that out at the attractive man.com also there's links to boot camps we do three-day boot camps all over the world and seven-day boot camps and one-on-ones and definitely check all of that out at the attractive man.com thanks perfect and uh, I want to thank you for being on the call Matt and uh, guys uh, we'll be having another one soon. Just watch for the announcements and uh, the event's going to be coming up pretty fast. Look forward to meeting you all in person. And with that said, have a beautiful day and we'll, uh, we'll see you or hear you in the, the next webinar. Take care. See you guys.